Okay, this quick revision video is from chapter P4 of your uh, computer book. And we're looking at circuits, series and parallel, and the sorts of questions we get involving Ohm's law and various components in circuits. So job number one in your revision is to make sure you know these 14 circuit symbols um, shown here in the diagram. Notice that there are a number of circuit symbols that all have a rectangular shape in the center of them, like this, and these are always resistors. So anything that's got this rectangular shape is some sort of resistor, and the simplest type would be a fixed resistor which would have a standard value. Notice that we've got a number like this. Here's our standard fixed resistor, number six. Number seven with an arrow through, a variable resistor, one where we can change the resistance uh, in the same way as you'd use a dimmer switch in a circuit. This resistor here has the line all the way through and represents a fuse. A fuse is a special type of resistor that is designed to melt and break the circuit if too much current flows. Number 13, a thermistor a resistor which changes resistance according to its temperature, and 14, a light-dependent resistor, or LDR, a resistor which changes its resistance according to the light level. There are two versions of a similar symbol that looks like this, which is the symbol for a diode. If there is nothing else, like number 5, it's a diode, and it um, only allows electricity to flow in one direction, in one way round the circuit. The addition of two arrows turn this symbol into a light, a light emitting diode, a diode that gives out light. You've got your standard uh, symbols number three for a cell and number four for a battery made out of a number of cells connected in series. <clears throat> Remember, if you're working out the total potential difference of a battery, like number four, you'd add up the individual potential differences of the cells. So if you had a battery made out of three cells, one, two, three, and it would be connected into the circuit like this. If each of these cells was 1.5 volts, the total potential difference of this battery of cells would be 1.5 times 3, which would be a 4.5 volt battery. The potential difference across this battery, the voltmeter, would be reading 4.5 volts. The other measurement you need to be able to make in circuits is current with an ammeter, number 12. And remember, ammeters go in line with the circuit. They are connected in series. I'm drawing a series circuit here with two light bulbs connected with an ammeter to measure the current, a voltmeter to measure potential difference in parallel, and an ammeter to measure the current flowing round the circuit. You can only have a current flowing if you've got a potential difference and you've got something that can carry charge. In this case, inside the wires, electrons can move because the wires are made out of metal. Electrons carry charge and will flow round the circuit as long as it is complete and there is a potential difference across its ends. OK, the first of a couple of equations we need in this topic. This is the equation for, that links charge, current and time. We represent charge with the letter Q, current with the letter I, and time with a small t. Don't get confused with the units. Charge is measured in coulombs, current is the amps, and time has to be measured in seconds. We can use this to define what current is, and if we re rearrange this using the triangle, which you can see over here, the current I is equivalent to charge divided by time. In other words, current, what is current, is the rate of flow of charge. OK, 
So we've got three graphs here showing the relationship between potential difference, remember this would be in volts, and the current in amps. And the graphs show that the current and potential difference can be positive or negative. In other words, could flow both ways around the circuit. Graph A is showing Ohm's law. And therefore, this straight line is an ohmic conductor. We're saying that the potential difference, V, is directly proportional to the current, I. And we can tell that from this line here, because the line is straight, and it goes through zero, the origin of the graph. The definition of direct proportionality, a straight line through the origin. Potential difference is directly proportional to current. This Ohm's law will only be true if the temperature is constant. Temperature affects the resistance of all conductors, and so in order to have this direct relationship, we need a constant temperature. Graph B shows what happens when the temperature isn't constant. This is the graph for a lamp or a filament light bulb. You can see that the line is curving as the potential difference goes up. The current is also going up. But as you can see, it's not the direct relationship that we've seen here in the straight line. There's a curve. What's happening here is as the potential difference allows a larger and larger current to flow, the temperature of the wire is getting greater and greater. As the temperature of the wire increases, the resistance of the filament of the bulb also increases, meaning it's getting more and more difficult to push a current through the light bulb filament. You can tell here, because in the flatter part of the graph, for a larger increase in volts, you only get a small increase in amps. Yeah? In the early part of the graph, the same increase in volts makes a big increase in amps. Note for all of these graphs that the gradient is not the resistance, it's 1 over the resistance. In other words, if the line is getting flatter, the resistance is getting bigger. Graph C is the graph we would get for a diode. Remember the circuit symbol. And of course, diodes have a very, very high resistance in one direction which means electricity can only flow in one section of the graph. In other words, when there's a positive potential difference and a positive current, it will flow in that direction, but not in this direction here, shown by this horizontal line. Our second equation for this um, section of the topic uh, shows the relationship between potential difference, current and resistance. Often we'd say that this is Ohm's law, the potential difference is the current times the resistance. So this law is true, like we said, when temperature is constant. And make sure we know the units here. Potential difference is in volts, current, in amps, and resistance. The unit of resistance is the ohm. More graphs here that we're looking at, similar to the last ones. We've got two straight lines here. We've got a B and a D. So both of these, B and D, are both showing a fixed resistor, a constant resistance. B has the steepest line. In other words, for a certain potential difference, resistor B allows a bigger current to flow. That means that B is the lower of the two resistors out of B and D. Graph C is flattening out, and so you can see it's like the light bulb. So here, as the potential difference goes up, the temperature is going up, 
and the resistance is going up. The line is getting flatter, it's getting less steep, it's getting harder for the current to be pushed round. Graph A shows the opposite to that. And so if we were thinking about line A here, we'd be saying something is happening so that when the voltage goes bigger and the current gets bigger, the resistance is getting lower. Okay, it's getting easier and easier and easier for the current to flow. This could be something like a thermistor or a light dependent resistor where we've got a factor that's affecting the resistance in the component. Okay, this circuit, uh, oops, here we've got a series circuit showing two resistors R2 and R3 connected in series with a cell. This cell must have a voltage of these two numbers added together because the voltage of the cell will be split between the battery, between the two resistors. So this is a six volt cell. It's producing a current of two amps. We know in a series circuit that this current will be the same everywhere. That means there's two amps of current flowing through this resistor and through this resistor. If we're going to calculate the resistance, we're going to use our V equals IR equation rearranged. We know that the battery is supplying 6 volts and that 4.5 volts has gone into R2. So resistor 2 will be the voltage divided by the current and our resistance is measured in ohms. Resistor 3, notice, only 1.5 volts is required to push the 2 amps through, and so a lower resistance. For a lower resistance, you need a smaller potential difference to push the same current. Finally, we're looking at these two resistors in parallel, I can tell it's a parallel circuit because there's branches and looking at this circuit I know I've got a 3 volt battery. That means the voltage across every branch in the circuit is also 3 volts. If I connected a voltmeter across here it would say 3 volts. If I put one across this resistor here it would say 3 volts. In a parallel circuit the potential difference is the same everywhere. 0.75 amps here represents the total current in the circuit and we're being told that half an amp has gone through R5. That means that 0.25 amps has gone through R4 and if we were to calculate these resistors we do exactly the same as we did in the last question remembering that for R4 the voltage will be 3 and the current is 0.25 and for R5, the potential difference, the voltage is 3 volts, and the current is half an amp. So for R4, resistance is 12 ohms, and for R5, the resistance is half that. Notice the smaller resistor a bigger current can flow through it in a parallel circuit for the same amount of volts.